Hello grade 12s, in today's video we're going to be starting off the topic work, energy, power or like I call it for short, WEP, work, energy, power. So this is a introductory video, we're going to be starting off by looking at work, introduction to work, what is work, how do you calculate work, this is very important, very important topic. To prepare for this topic you also need to know your Newton's laws so make sure you go back on that but you want to stay tuned throughout the whole video, I give teacher tips, teacher tricks and you want to subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Let's go. Work energy power is usually question five in your physics exam or your paper one exam. Remember, you'll also get multiple choice questions on work energy power. Now, the best way in order to prepare for this section is to go over all of your mechanics. So what I mean by that is go over all of Newton's laws, go over equations of motion, and very, very important, go over energy and energy principles. So things that you learned in grade 10, such as the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, how to calculate gravitational potential energy, how to calculate kinetic energy. Because as you can see from the title, work, energy, power, all of those things will be popping up again in this section and we'll go into it in a little bit more detail. Now I've taken screenshots from the exam guidelines, which I will link in the description box below, but this is what you need to know for the section work, energy, power. Now, obviously, it's called work, energy, power for a reason. It can be divided into little mini subtopics namely work, the work energy theorem, so that's where energy comes into context, and then power. So there's a lot that you need to know for this section. Two pages over here worth of things that you need to know. Take this, screenshot it, use it as a checklist, make sure that you go through all of the stuff when you're studying and preparing for exams. But let's start at the beginning. What is work? What is the definition of work? And how do you calculate work? So this is the definition of work as taken from your exam guidelines. The definition is written in red and it is basically the work formula that I've written out here for you. I copied that from your exam guidelines just as is. So it says, what is work? The work done on an object by a force. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that different forces act on objects. So for example, if I have this mug and I push it to the right, I have an applied force acting on the mug, I have friction acting on the mug, there's a normal force that my hand is exerting on the mug, there's a force of gravity that the earth is exerting on the mug downwards, there are a lot of forces acting on the mug. And when forces act on an object, these forces do work. Okay, so think of work as physical exertion, physical activity. When you do work, you get tired. Why? Because you exert energy. So, for example, if you push a box, you are applying a force on a box. And that force is doing work on the box. It's moving the box from point A to point B. It's transferring energy to the box, which is causing it to move. It's causing its velocity to change. And that's basically what the section is about. So, work is done by a force. So, just like with the mug example, the applied force can do work. The frictional force can do work. All of these different forces can do work. So the work done on an object by a force, where force is represented as F, it can re be represented in that formula, where F is the magnitude of the force. And you know that magnitude just means the amount or the size or the value of the force. So F is the magnitude of the force. Delta X is the magnitude of the displacement. So how far the object moved. Did it go one meter, two meters, 3,000 meters? That is displacement. And then cos theta. Now, theta is an angle, and it's the angle between the force and the displacement. I will show you what I mean in a second. But let's consider this scenario over here. We've got a person pushing against a wall with a certain force. So look at your formula. We've got a force. There's an angle, basically, but there's no displacement. What does that mean? It means the wall does not move. If I push a wall, the wall is hopefully not going to move. So if there's no displacement, it means that displacement is zero. So it doesn't actually matter what the force is. I'm going to multiply that by zero. It doesn't matter what anything else is because zero multiplied by anything is zero. So the work done is zero. There's no work done by that force because it did not move. However, consider this scenario. So a person is pushing someone else in a chair. 
this person, the person in blue, is exerting an applied force to the right. Okay, so there is an applied force. This person is moving. So the applied force is moving over the object over a distance. There is a displacement. And there's an angle. I'll explain what the angle is now. But because all three components are in place, there is work done. The person pushing the chair performs work. So let's look at the, the, um, the formula in more detail. So work is done by a force, as I mentioned. So for example, we can get the work done by the applied force. This is how you would write it. The work done by the applied force is equal to the applied force, the displacement that the object is moving, and cause of the angle. Or you can say the work done by friction is equal to the frictional force times the displacement times the cause of the angle. Okay, so we can adapt the formula in order to work out work done by a specific force. Right, so again, looking at our formula, force is measured in Newton. Delta X is displacement, it's measured in meters. Please convert to meters if it's not given in meters. Cos theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. I'll show you now what that means. And multiplying all those three things together gives me the work done or the energy transferred. Now, it's very important to remember, and we have done this in other sections in physics, work done is the same thing as energy transferred. Very, very, very important. And I know you might say, but ma'am, that says W, it doesn't say E. So W for work, not E for energy, but work done is the same thing as energy transferred. It's measured in joule or J. And it's very important to note, and this is quite nice, that work done is a scalar. And I hope you remember what scalars are. It means that they do not need a direction, which is great. You can say that the work done by the applied force is 300 joules. Done. No direction needed. So now what does this mean about the angle? I don't understand. I know that that is what you might be thinking. So the angle, theta, is the angle between the force and the displacement. So what I mean by that is let's pretend that I am pulling a box and the box is moving to the right. First things first, which way is the box moving? Which way is the displacement? Remember displacement, delta x? I told you that the displacement is to the right. So that's delta x. And I told you I'm pulling the box to the right. So which way is the force? It's an applied force. Which way is the applied force? Also to the right. And that makes sense. You're pulling the box to the right by the applied force. And it's moving to the right. Now, theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. The best way to think about it is, is there an angle between them? So if the applied force is going to the right, and it's moving to the right, is there an angle between them? No, they're going in the exact same direction. There's no angle between them. So basically what you have is applied force going that way, delta x going that way. There's no angle between them. They're both going in the exact same direction. So theta is equal to zero, okay? And now I want you to take your calculator, so you can do it with me, calculator, type in cos zero on your calculator, what you should get, and I don't know if you can see this, but what you should get is one. You get a positive answer because zero is one. Okay, cool. Now, you might think, okay, cool, ma'am, I don't understand. When do I have a situation when the angle is not zero? If I ask you to work out the work done by the normal force. Okay, now, same situation. The box is being pulled by an applied force to the right. So the box's displacement is to the right. So I'm drawing an arrow. Delta X is to the right. Now remember, what I'm drawing here is not a force. This is the displacement. So the box is moving to the right. There's an applied force acting on the box. The applied force is also to the right. But that's not what I'm asking for. I asked you, calculate the work done by the normal force. In the previous question, I worked out the work done by the applied force. So the work done by F applied, well, I didn't actually work it out, but I used F applied, which I didn't give you a value, delta X, which I didn't give you, but I told you that cos theta, theta was zero. So we get a positive answer. But now what? 
which way does the normal force act? This box is on a table, it's on a surface. The normal force is always up 90 degrees relative to the surface. This is Fn. Now, what do I mean by theta? Theta is the angle between the force, the force that I'm questioning you about. So in this question, I said calculate the work done by the normal force. So I'm going to ignore the applied force. Scratch it out. I'm not talking about the applied force. I want to know the work done by the normal force. So you look at the normal force, which is going like this. And you look at the displacement, which is going like this. What's the angle between those two? First of all, let's just clarify. The normal force is acting straight up. The displacement is acting to the right. What's the angle between those? 90 degrees. If it helps you to see it like this, the normal force is acting straight up. And I told you the displacement is going to the right. The angle between those, 90 degrees. So theta, the angle between the force and the displacement is 90 degrees. Now, remember, when you work out the work done by the normal force, you're going to substitute it in this formula. Okay? We don't know what the normal force is, okay? But it would go in the place of F. The normal force would go in the place of F. We don't know how far the box moved, but it would go in the place of delta X. So say it's 10 meters, you would put 10 meters there. But we know the angle is 90 degrees. Okay, now take your calculator, type in cos 90. You should know this from your trig graphs anyways, but if you type in cos 90, so you can see what I wrote over there, cos 90. If you type cos 90 into your calculator, you get zero. So what this actually means is that the normal force does not do any work on the box. You will notice that if theta is zero, anywhere from zero, but less than 90, it's positive work. If theta is 90 on the dot, zero, because cos 90 is zero, no work. If theta is bigger than 90, we get something called negative work. And you might say, mama, don't get it. Show me an example. Same box. The box is moving to the right. So the displacement is to the right. The displacement is to the right. But remember, there's an applied force acting on the box, pulling it to the right. But now I ask you, calculate the work done by friction. Okay? So I want the work done by the frictional force. So in my formula, you write your work formula. We know that the force that I'm going to be using is frictional force. Okay? I don't know what it is, but it'll be frictional force. We put in our displacement to how far the box moves. Again, I don't know in this question, but I would put it in. Now, what is my angle? Think about it. If the box moves to the right, which way does friction act? If the box moves to the right, friction always acts in the opposite direction of the motion, so to the left. So friction is going this way. I'm going to call it FK because the box is moving, kinetic friction. So take a look at this. The displacement is to the right. Friction is going to the left. What is that angle over there between those two? Okay, so um, box is moving to the right, friction is going to the left, complete opposite directions. The angle between them is 180 degrees. If you type in cos 180 on your calculator, let's do it, cos 180, you should get negative 1. Okay, so we will go through positive, negative, and no work in the next video, but I hope that these examples have helped you understand what I mean by theta, the angle. I'll show you one more that hopefully will clear it up if you don't understand yet. So in this example, we have a box and the box is being pulled by an applied force. You can see the black arrow over there. Let's call it F applied. And they tell you that the applied force is acting at an angle of 20 degrees relative to the horizontal. So you've seen stuff like this in Newton's Laws question. If I had to work out the work done by the applied force. Remember, forces do work. So if I want to work off the work done by F applied, I'm using F applied as a little subscript to show that I'm calculating the work done by the applied force. The force that I use would be F applied. I don't know what it is in this example, doesn't matter. Delta X cos theta. That's your formula for work. F applied would be 
the applied force. Let's say it's 20, or let's say it's uh, 10 Newton, okay? F applied would be 10. Let's say the box moves to the right by 13 meters. Okay, so 10 is the applied force. Delta X is how far the box moved. So it moved, dot, 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 it moved 13 meters. So delta X is 13. Now, cos of the angle, remember theta is the angle, and theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. So the box moved to the right. So the box is going like this. The applied force, check over here, is acting at an angle. And what is the angle over there? The angle over there is 20 degrees. So it would be cos 20. If you work that out on your calculator, you say 10 times 13 times cos 20, and you get a positive answer, which makes sense because theta is bigger than zero, but it's smaller than 90. Remember, as soon as you go cos 90, no work is done. But 20 is less than 90, so we get a positive work being done. I get 122,16 joules. So that means 122,16 joules of energy is transferred to the box. The work done by the applied force is 122,16 joules. So I hope this introduction to work energy power and work in particular makes sense. Please comment below what you want to see next. Subscribe for more. Check out the playlist for more work energy power videos. Bye, everyone.